Hi, do you have plans to pursue your education abroad? Are you confused about the list of documents that you need to complete your process? If that is your worry, then I got you. In this video, I'm going to share with you the list of documents that you need to complete your application to study abroad. If this is the first time you are clicking to view my page, I hope that you will subscribe, like and share this video with anyone who is also interested in pursuing the education abroad. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you very much and I hope that you share this video with your friends who are interested in pursuing the education abroad. Let's build this family together. My name is Erika San, a MasterCard Foundation Scholar pursuing a Master of Education at the University of California, Berkeley in the United States. As always, this is the Scholar Center with Eric Asa. <music> I know this application process can be very complex, complicating, frustrating, and somewhat very worrisome. That is why this page is here to guide you as you navigate through the entire application process. So don't worry, stay glued as I bring you the content that will help you in the application process. Now let's get into the details. In order for you to complete an application, there are a number of documents that you need to present to the admissions committee through your application portal that will deem that you have completed your application. I group these documents as core document and then extra document. Now for the core document, you need your personal statement, your CV, your academic certificate, your academic transcript, and then your recommendation letters. Now for the extra document, you will need a writing sample or proposal, you will need English proficiency letter, you will need uh, test scores in terms of GRE, LSAT, GMAT, and then a host of other documents that you will see in your admissions checklist. Now the documents that you need to complete your applications are one, your personal statement. What is a personal statement? A personal statement is a brief description about yourself that talks about your objectives, your background, your abilities, your interventions that you have done in terms of volunteer activities that has prepared you to take up the course that you want to do in the university. So you need to write an essay and I always suggest that you write 500 to 700 words usually for master's program and then you can go beyond 700 for PhD program. You don't have to write or use huge vocabularies just keep it short and straightforward. Remember, the admissions committee is going to spend just two minutes or at most three minutes on re in, in reading your personal statement. The next core document that you need in your application is your academic CV. Now remember, academic CV is different from a resume. In the grad school application process, an academic CV is a document or the CV that you need to apply into graduate school. A resume is a CV that helps you apply for a job. There are a few headings that must not be captured in your academic CV. You don't need to write about your hobbies. You don't need to write about your place of birth, your date of birth. All of this information is not needed. Just stick it to your name, your telephone number, your email. Include your objective. Include your objective. Just a short, maybe three sentences description about yourself and your aspiration your work experience, your, your research skills, your publication if you have, your voluntary activities if you have, your extracurricular activities if you have, any awards or honors that you received, and then finally you can include your computer skills. For a master's application, try to limit your CV to just two pages. And then for a PhD application, you can go beyond two pages, but try to limit it between three pages and four pages. This is because you have a short time to prove yourself to the admissions committee. So you don't want to present to them a very long CV about yourself. Keep everything just direct, but try to put in the most relevant information about yourself that you want them to know. So the next core document I'll talk about is your academic certificate. That is high school certificate, bachelor certificate, and then master certificate. If you're applying for an undergrad program, you will need your high school certificate. If you're applying for a master's program, you need your bachelor's certificate. 
If you are applying for a PhD program, you need your bachelor's and your master's certificate. Make sure that you scan them neatly so that you can upload them in the application portal when you are applying. Now the next core document is your academic transcript. So you have to make sure that you scan all your academic transcripts, your high school transcripts, your bachelor's transcript, and master's transcript to the one that refers to you and then upload them including the scan copy of the grading scale. Now at the back of every transcript, there's a grading scale that talks about how the grading was done. Make sure that you scan those pages in addition to the transcript and then upload them into the application portal when you are applying. The last core document I'll talk about is the recommendation letters. This is one of the most important documents in the entire application process. And I know it's very difficult to come up with this document sometimes, or it's very difficult for you to get recommenders putting in your, the recommendations for you every time. But make every effort to talk to your professors or people that you have worked with to help you get your recommendations for you. Now, this is a trick. If you are requested to put in three recommendation letters, you can put in two academic references, that is from people who taught you. And then you can put in one professional reference, that is from somebody that you've already worked with before. So it could be from a place outside of the university or outside of the school that you went to. Now the extra documents that you need can be the writing sample, which, which is supposed to be a short form of your undergrad research. So if you have done or if you did your undergrad research, you can trim it down to about five pages or six pages to submit as your writing sample or your proposal. The next extra document can also be the GRE and then the LSAT or the GMAT. If you don't write this, that is okay. I came into my university without writing a GRE. So you can always apply to schools that do not request for GRE. If that is something that you don't want to do, that is okay. But if you want to write it, I will encourage you to write it as well. Because sometimes it helps in funding decisions and all that. But if you don't write it, it will not prevent you from gaining admission or it will not prevent you from gaining funding opportunities as well. But like I said earlier, I didn't need, I didn't have to write that, but I still got into the university and I was able to get through to get a funding. Now the next extra document that I will say is the English proficiency test or letter for some countries. Now I put this here because it depending on who is watching this video, it might be a core document or an extra document. For people, for, for me, I come from Ghana. So I sometimes I need to upload English proficiency exams and most of the time there's no need for me to also upload. But for people who are also from non-English speaking countries, they have to prove that they did their undergrad in English or they did their primary education or elementary through to high school in English as well. Or at most, they have to present test scores in terms of IELTS and then TOEFL scores. So this is also another important document, but it's restricted to a certain range of people, depending on where you are coming from. So just to recap, the documents that you need to complete your application process are your personal statement, your academic CV, your certificate, your transcript, and then your recommendation letters. The extra document could be any document at all. It could be writing sample or proposal, test calls in terms of English test calls or GRE or GMAT or LSAT or any other document at all that the school can request for. I think that if you have this document, it will prepare you to complete any application at all. If this is a type of content you are interested in, I will entreat you to click on the notification button so that anytime I upload a video, you will be the first person to be notified. I also entreat you to share this with your friends. This will go a long way to help somebody. I hope to catch you next time. As always, this has been the Scholars Center with Eric Hassan.